Hi, uh, my name is Vinay and in this video I will demonstrate how you can simulate and uh, CMOS inverter in various configuration and uh, how you can do spike simulation using the DSCA software. Okay, so I have the syllabus with me and where the the recommendation is that you have to design an inverter with various configuration of the sizes of the transistors and we will set them according to the mentioned uh, experiment and we'll simulate this. So I have just opened the DSCH. I'm using the 3.8 version of the software and I just go to the folder where I have kept my spice file. I mean the schematic file. So here we are. So according to the syllabus mentioned, uh, the user or the student have to set, yeah. So he has to design an inverter uh, using technologies below 180 nanometer. That's so anything you, it's, it's of your choice. So you have to design an inverter with loading it with 0.1 picofarad, And you have to set the inverter width uh, with various sizes. So the sizes are, uh, for the first inverter you have to keep W and W and P both equal. Then you have to take the twice the width of the P for the N. And then you have to half the P with respect to N. Okay. Then uh, there's some uh, mentioning of uh, the type of input you have to apply like rise and fall time of the 1 nanosecond, pulse rate 10 nanosecond, time period 20 nanosecond, and clock it. And you have to find uh, what is the high to low delay and low to high and the td is nothing but the average of both these two values okay so i'll just demonstrate the rest of the computation etc the students can do on their own okay so let's start with this so this is how i have made the schematic the schematic would be available on my uh, shared folder so here you can see that in the note it is mentioning what is the width it is 0.4 micrometer and here the first inverter NMOS is also 0.4 micrometer so that means if WP and WN are equal now here in this second one I have mentioned W of P as 0.4 but the WN is 0.8 so that means NMOS is twice larger than the PMOS so that will make this guy having more current in the third one, we do the vice versa. We set the width of NMOS as half of the PMOS, that is 0.2. So this guy would be less current as compared to PMOS. So the students can study what effect it makes. And uh, there you go, the, the capacitance is 0.1 picofarad loaded with all this. I've given the same input to all of them. So if you want to do an uh, just a digital simulation, so you can perform by clicking the play button. Here you can see the input is zero, all three inverter output are uh, one. <clears throat> but if I set it to one, all level one goes zero. So and you can even see the switching of the various transistors and what is happening. But in this simulation, you cannot see the actual the, the, the analog simulation, or you can see um, time versus voltage U1 cannot see that because it's only a pattern-based simulator. So to do that, we take help of WinSpice, that is a spice software. Okay. So to run the WinSpy software, you can go to file, okay, and you can say generate spice file. So what the software will do, he will convert into a spice file format, okay, and you can execute uh, using a WinSpy software. And DSCS has a seamless interface with the WinSpy. You can call the WinSpy right from here, and the simulation would be done with ease. So let's, I do nothing, I just run WinSpy. So I have, uh, the software knows the, uh, the link of the EXE so that you can just run it from here. So there you see that uh, the spy simulation comes up and I can understand how the things are working. I can just zoom in in a part of it. Maybe I zoom it a little bit more. <coughs> so here you see that the delays are coming and the loading effects that can be seen. I just zoom it a little bit more. So the red one what you see is your input and the green, blue and yellow is the output. Although the mentioning of the nodes have been done, like yellow is V3, green is V4, and blue is V5, but which is what? I mean, it's difficult for me to understand. So for that, <clears throat> you can come back to DSCH, and you can ask him to show the electrical net. 
So what happens that uh, he shows you the which nodes are. So 5, 4 and 3. These are nodes which are of the output node of each inverter. So 5 is for the first one, 4 is for the second one, 3 is for the third one. Okay. So if we go back. So 5 is the blue one. Okay. So this you see this comes in the middle. Okay. The rise and fall time comes in the middle. Okay. The 4 is the second one which is a stronger. Okay. So that's why you see it is more faster. The rise and fall delays are a little uh, shorter than the previous one. The yellow is the V3, which is the least one. So that's why you see, um, because the, the uh, WN is half of the WP. So that's why it's you see that this guy is the slowest one. Okay. Now the timings are not according to the, the mentioned uh, in the book. Uh, the work, I mean, the manual says, the experiment the manual says that you have to give an input with rise and fall delay one in a second, pulse width of 10 nanosecond and time period 20 nanosecond. Okay, so let's do that. So to do that, uh, I, I just close my WinSpice. I mean, I close all my WinSpice simulations. Okay, then what I do, I just delete the input. Okay, and I go to my symbol library and look for a voltage source signal. I just drag drop over here and I just right click and connect to the input. Then I go to basic and connect a ground to it. Now I double click on my input V source <clears throat> and I set it to pulse parameters. Okay, so here I say my rise time is one, fall time is one, time period is 20. Okay, and the pulse rate is 10. <clears throat> okay, that's it. So this is what is required. Now I just go to file, so it generates spice file. And instead of 100, I make it maybe only 50 so that I, I don't run it for a longer one. Yeah. So there you are. So there you can see that uh, it pops up the simulation and maybe I just zoom it in only one block. Yeah. So here you see that this is from around 11, I mean 12 to 22. This is 10 nanosecond is the pulse width. Okay. And uh, the rise, fall, delay, etc. all are set. So here you see that for the rise time, everything comes almost of this equivalent, you see? They come almost the equivalent, okay? Whereas in case of fall time, they are of different configuration because of the NMOS width, which is fluctuating, okay? So if you want to measure it, the WinSpice offers um, an, a visual measurement option. So as we are working on a supply voltage of one volt, so you have to take it from 0.5, which is half of it. So from 0.5, which is comes for 12.5 nanosecond so from 12.5 to almost like 13 so you get one and a half i mean sorry 0.5 uh, nanosecond of the delays okay so that is close to 500 picosecond and then you can zoom it in a little bit more on this area and uh, at 500 this you can measure this so this is around 0.5 and 510, maybe 520, and maybe 550 picoseconds. Okay, so these are the three delays values from uh, low to high delay. And uh, for high to low delay, you can zoom this part. Okay, and again from 0.5, you can measure the delays of these three. So from 21.5 nanosecond, okay, to 21.8, so that is 0.3, almost like 0.3 nanoseconds. And the second one, V5, comes around 22. Okay, so this is again 0 0.5, 0 0.3, 0 0.5. And this guy comes more than close to 1 <coughs> nanosecond. So this is how you can measure the delays uh, in this. Although the, the WinSpice also offers you to dump the file, the simulation results in a text file. So you can ask him to dump the result in a text file. And that you can open up in an Excel file. You could plot the result over there. And uh, if you want to analyze something over there, so that can be done. Okay. So this is the first experiment only for the CMOS inverter in various configuration mode. Okay. And uh, in my next video, I will put uh, the layout for it. Thank you very much.